because uh, Clay was terrific. Um, Clay felt good before the game, apparently. 25 and this is what in the first half. I think being home after such a long trip or trip so helped a lot, and I just felt really good body-wise today. I didn't feel any pain anywhere, and I thought that transferred over nicely to the gameplay. That's Clay Thompson. Man. Bastani, he's a flamethrower right now. I'm stealing from the great Kevin Hart. He's a flamethrower! Well, last night. Last night. Struggled a little against the Mavericks on Friday. Oh. Remember, don't forget that game. That's Dude. when they played a good team, but he and they got that. beat on the road yeah. by the team that wasn't at full strength. Neither were the Warriors. Yeah. Neither were the Warriors. But overall, we'll take this clay all day. He, he's got up no off doubt. the mat, man. Absolutely. Um, the one thing I was going to say about that, Clay, how his body felt really good. Shoot, there was something I was going to say that you said. Body felt really good. Body felt really good. Yeah, it transferred I over. Yeah, I can't. I can't think about it. Um, how often does Clay play without pain? You know, he's two years removed from this mm. uh, couple injuries. Most of the time, but it's eighty-two games. You're not going to be one hundred percent every night. Yeah, I mean, what well, I missed maybe three, four games this year. That's incredible. After two years of rehab plus, so that's something I can hang my hat on and be proud of is just being durable throughout the season. Pay the man. Yeah, pay him. Got to pay him. Actually, you don't. You, you should. You should pay the man. That's kind of where I'm at right now. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. But you got to pay Clay Thompson right now. And I, I think I think most Warrior fans. I think the you know I came into the year and said, well, let's see what we're gonna do with Clay. You know, he's and then he came out and he struggled and playing for a contract. And then he goes comes off the bench. But if you take the totality of the season, which is almost one full regular season right now, let me try to take the pulse of Warrior fans. You tell me if I'm right or wrong at 888-957-9570. I think at the beginning of the year, beginning of the year and the middle of the year, uh, Clay Thompson has won a lot of fans over. And I think most Warrior fans are now saying, let's get him back here at a, at a good number. 25, if it's 25, it's 25. If it's a little more than that, it's a little more than that. But I think... I think most Warrior fans right now would like to see Clay Thompson come back. If that number's yeah. anywhere between 25 and 30, and I think there's probably a lot of fans who don't really care about the money, and rightfully so, where they're just like, if we can get him back, we want him back. No doubt. And, Stani, right now he's shooting 38% from three on the season. You know, and in a league now that's predicated on shooting more now than it ever has been, I just don't say how... You could say bye bye to Clay Thompson and forget the nostalgia and everything that goes with what he's meant to this team. I'm just talking from a basketball standpoint. Steph needs somebody that can shoot it with him. And this has been his road dog forever. It's worked. And I can't believe he's up there two years after this, you know, uh, coming back, leading in minutes with Steph. And what's crazy, if we want to give Clay some love, I'll give him the greatest love. Uh, shout out Whitney Houston of all time. The year he came back. I know some will say he started in January against he Cleveland, did. but he led uh, the Warriors in minutes in the finals against Boston. Yep, he did. That year he played 32 games. And that's the other, you know, the other thing is I'm, I'm looking at this. I don't, I don't know how you guys look at it, but I look at it as two years ago they won it. Last year they, they went to the second round. And then this year I try to compare what's been going on to last year and the year before. And I think the one worry I'd have for the Golden State Warriors is it feels to me like because Steph and Clay have been healthy all year, and, that, and that's kind of the other thing. Like, is it fair to say, you know, Steph doesn't have a Robin? Is it, like, I was, is it that's fair, where I was is it, going. Is it fair to say? Okay, so He's reentered that discussion now. All right. Well, then, uh, 510, if keeping Clay prevents Lakeham from building for the future, Adios. See, I don't. I think that represents a minority, but I, I do. I do think there's a part of this that is, if Clay walks, you're worse. You just are. If Clay resigns here for three years, that's a while, and then you're looking at the big three for another three years, and that comes with positives and negatives. Yeah. I, and, and why so does what, it just start with Clay Thompson, Stoney? What about contracts the, up? Yeah, but what about Draymond last year? How much did that impede 
uh, the future, exactly. the four four hundred. I'm a just lot, saying, maybe, yeah. maybe. I don't know how much it. it, it I, I like this Clay Thompson right now, man. How much do you like him? For I, how, how I told you, I'd give him a uh, Steph Curry's jersey number. I would give him that. Steiny, I believe that all lifetime Warrior fans who have seen all of our great players leave us with absolutely nothing want to see all three of those guys that gave us four chips retire as Warriors. Yep, and that's. That's to me is my inherent. I don't know if it's disagreement, but that's where I am a little different than a lot of fans. I think there are a lot of fans that want to see the big three. Is how many yeah. fans out there want to see the big three retire together as Warriors? Up. I got my hand up. What if it means no playoffs for the next two years? Do you still want to see that? Because there's a chance that they could essentially have had the big three this year. Two of the big three wow. played 75 games. And, and that's the other thing now that, to me, there, there's some things that have presented themselves. And one is that you can no longer say, well, as long as we have Steph Curry, we have championship action. Because Steph and Clay were healthy all season long. And if you're telling me Draymond missing 20, 25 games is the difference between them being a 10th seed and a championship team, I can't make that leap. Or what about a fifth seed? Um, and then you get okay. bounced out the playoffs, whatever. You know what I mean? Like that, that's where this thing is going. This season to me is like, hold on now. You're telling me Hidre not missed the amount of games that he meant he missed for getting suspended or whatnot. Does that change our what you know, who we are and what we are in regard to wins? And I really believe I could go to a whiteboard or, and and do a PowerPoint on this team. We Yeah, they're 10th now. Maybe they get bounced. But if we do run it back and there is no suspension because you got to be proactive, are we really talking about, okay, maybe no st- championships, Donnie, but maybe we're talking about a fourth or fifth seed in the in the regular season. Like, I don't think that's too far-fetched now. That I believe that is not Fantasy Island anymore with the emergence of clay ball. I do. Well, it's not going to happen this year. They're going to be a 10 seed this year. Last season, so they've gone, here's what here's what's happened the last three years. They were a three seed, then they were a six seed, and now they're a 10 seed. Yeah. So the funny thing is, is we, we're kind of joking around in here a lot. Oh, you tell you what, they're playing pretty well. Run it back. Maybe they run it back. Can you really run it back when you've been a three seed, then a six seed, then a 10 seed. Not only that, the other thing I was thinking about is, is let's say Draymond Green had not gotten suspended this year. You're still, you're, <sighs> you're still playing the, the oldest guys on the team the most amount of minutes. So if you, if you resign, let's say Clay stays here and you got Clay, Draymond, and Steph for the next three years, because they'll redo Steph yeah. or not redo, but they'll extend. So now you got, you do clay for three more years. The one thing that I think has got to be talked about is how much do those guys play over the course of those three years and how much are the younger players more and more integrated into the core over the next three years? Because I don't, I don't know how much longer you can keep Steph, Clay, and Draymond like playing more minutes per game than everybody else on the team like as they get older. I think you're going to need more and more and more from the young guys. And how do you start that process over the course of three years? Well, before you grab the call, let me just tell you this, Donnie. We all know how you feel, and you're not a doctor, so there is no you'll if, if you we can prove you right or wrong. But I'm gonna cite some names, and everybody's body's different. But if you're gonna bring the big three back, from what I'm watching, from my pers- my standpoint. I want them to always supersede when it comes to minutes. I'm looking at LeBron James. Everybody's like not LeBron James, like but that. look at his minutes. He's everything still to the like Lakers. That. Look at Kevin Durant and Phoenix at his age. He's still playing the minutes. So don't we have to trust the staff and what they think is the best thing to do? Because if they if they disagree if they disagreed with you or they agreed with you rather, we would see the minutes curtail for for Steph. He wouldn't be playing as much as. He's playing, and on top of I'm that, play too. I'm talking about next year, the year after, and the year after that. Like, what is what does this team look like next year, or the year after, two years from now? Like, how much how much do we how much do they play? How much do you rely? See, I think we're reaching a point now where they're being relied upon too much 
that we're getting to the point where wow. it's just it's that's it's why getting TF- harder. It's getting hard. Yes, it's getting harder and harder and harder to rely on those guys because you're paying them so much they don't have enough help. And if you ask them to play more, then you're I don't want to say making a deal with the mm-hmm. devil, but you you have to be careful, I think, of pay of of like if I told the, you right of, now next year like nobody wants to talk about it, who's gonna lead in minutes? I think it would be Steph and Clay still. I I think you're right. I think you're probably right. But that's year one of the three that you're t- right. Like, you know, and, and it's kinda but, we'll handle that here, when we okay, get there. Type and, of thing. and here's my point. What does that guarantee you? I'll tell you yeah. what it guarantees you. The tenth seed. Well, see, that's yeah. all it guarantees you. You need other guys to be better. Like I don't think Steph and Clay are going to be better next year. If they're about the same, I think you take it. They've both been plenty good. But in order to be better next year, like Draymond's going to have to play a full season. Yes. at this it level starts right there. Okay, availability is the best ability. To me, that's a coin flip. And what about you, Curry? Curry's going to be. I'm allowing that Curry and Clay are essentially the same, maybe with a little bit of a drop off. Now I mean, we got a Kaminga one more off season. So you like Wiggins Pods? Let me just ask you do, you: do you look at next year and say Steph and Clay are going to be better? I, I'm being real. I, I, I would bet on that more than they take a step back. And now I'm about to introduce you to the new Clay Thompson, Donnie. I'm talking about mindset and everything. Oh. So I'm betting on the come that you know what. I don't think it's that big of an ask to expect them to do this, or maybe Curry did something or didn't do it in the offseason last year to where he might be a little tired, but we we are We're going to the Olympics. And, and that is that see that, that I just see, I mean I, I don't guess, understand that one, but we'll, we'll we'll deal with that when it happens. But I guess here's what I don't understand. Yeah, and talk it's, to it's gonna sound harsh. Yeah. But I could come on. If now. if you were a GM, if you were Mike Dunleavy, like I'm sorry, you cannot you cannot go into next year saying, I think Steph and Clay are going to be the same or a little bit better. Like, how can you do that as a GM with two guys, one who's 36 and one who's 34? It's I'm not hating yeah. on those guys. But as a GM, I think you've got to go in with your eyes wide open and say, are we going to get 75 games apiece out of Clay and Steph? Boy, that would be great. Are they going to play at the same level? That would be Great, but like I just can't count on that at their age. But writing that check to me, to Clay, it's like when you have an old school standing and some guys drive the old school just on weekends. I don't think the Warriors are there with these guys. What do you I'm mean? driving the old school Monday through Friday. I'm my fancy, you know, 68 Mustang. You you break it out on weekends, but I'm not there yet with these guys. I'm riding them Monday through Friday, and you kind of I won't call. But that I'm not comparing Draymond seed, to this. I guess the is step. what I'm saying. Yeah, but a lot of other things did that okay. are not that's, Steph and Clay. And that's too. two years in a row that something didn't go right for this team uh, allegedly. See, I don't look at it as like, boy, things didn't go right the last two years for the Warriors. No, things just went the way they went. Oh, Stoney, see, those are two weird. Those are two soap opera type of things led by the same character. And you don't think Money that's a, green, and that's just a coincidence. No, I'm hoping that will stop. Hoping. Okay, that's All good. Right. All right, I'll give. I this. mean, I get I it. Know. Listen, I'm not. Listen. So you're hoping that Steph and Clay stay at this same level or get better, right? And you're hoping that Draymond can play a full season and, at this level. And I, not I mean, but no doubt. Okay. Like, I, would, would Matt Steinmetz right now feel better? Forget what's about to pop off in the playoffs. Yep. I mean this question. If they were the fifth seed right now, they're, the they're Warriors, I'm not doing that. But I'm, why? Because they do not. it all the other because, We do no. it all day, every day no, when I it told fits you. your narrative. No, I I'm told asking, you when I did. That Remember we had that conversation You wouldn't feel better about them if they were the fifth. It even not, got ran in the first round. I, don't I do think you would. I don't do hypotheticals with something that hasn't Happened. I would say I'll you don't do a do hypo- positive. I'll do a hypothetical with what happens if the Warriors beat the Lakers tomorrow, or what happens if the Warriors do make the playoffs. But I'm not doing a hypothetical on something that we've seen happen two straight years and say, can we make it disappear? No, we can't make. Do you it think disappear. the organization will I do that? Well, they don't have to Clay make a decision. To 30, on- I think they're going to have to do that positive hypothetical, like I'm, they did with Draymond, thinking yeah. this dude ain't going to get suspended again. And that's why after got... he hit, you know. Okay. So you're going to okay. And listen, I hear you, there's man. A se- there's a big segment of Warrior fans that want the big three to retire together, and that is right. I that's get that. fine. Yeah. It's not right. It's just that's what they want. 
It's, it doesn't make them right. It just, that's what they want. But shouldn't okay. the dynasty in that way? I don't know. Well, to me, you've earned that. I mean, and we're one guy, okay. one contract away from that okay. being the, the case. See, I look at the, if, if I'm Mike Dunleavy, I don't look at it as though, I don't just look at it rose colored glasses and say, we get Clay back here and Straymond plays a full season oh, and Wiggins is Wiggins and Kaminga takes the next we step. We got a center now. Yeah. You've got to also look at it. What happens if Steph only plays 58 uh, games, which is what he's averaged over the last four games, four years. What happens if Draymond misses a big chunk of another season, which he's done the last two seasons? What I'm saying is there, there's risk on both sides, but if, like, to me, if you resign, and I, I'm not saying you shouldn't, mm -hmm. I think he needs, I think he, you got to reward the guy now. But what I'm saying is if you got Steph, Clay, and Draymond, under contract for the next three years going into next year. One's going to be 37, one's going to be 35, one's going to be 34, 35. Then there's a risk there that the same things yeah. are going to happen because your three most important players are still your three most important players, and they're on the decline. They they are, in my mind. So it, it's I'm not here doomsaying. I'm just here, like... I do. I am curious what it looks like two or three years from now if the big three are still the most heavily relied on players on the team, which they still are, with the exception of Kaminga's ascendance. Mm. 